Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Anton Old Bay. Thank you for stopping by the collection room. Today I am looking at some more comics. Slowly working my way through uh, all the Femme Force issues I have. I love this book. Um, it's a fantastic book. It's, it's not a lot of people have heard of it. I always want more people to know about it because it's, it's just an interesting read with fantastic art in it. And today we are up to issue 29 through 32. I like to do about four a piece. And let's just take a look, see what you guys are looking for uh, when it comes to these. I know sometimes you've seen the covers, maybe you've seen these in back issue bins, but uh, you don't know what's in there. Well, this is the problem with most comics is it seems we don't open them up enough and we spend all of our time looking at the covers and getting them signed and getting them slabbed and ridiculous things like that. And uh, we forget what we're supposed to do, which was open them up open them up and read them and see what's in them and look at the art that was was done. Look at the work that was done. We need them all. So this is from the black and white era of Femforce. Now I've talked about this many times. Uh, Femforce started out color, then it goes to black and white uh, when they could no longer afford color. Um, it goes back to color later. Um, it goes back to black and white later. Some issues are normal comic size. Some are are a little bit cuts cut a little bit smaller, and some are just insanely insanely thick, like four or five comics thick, like a trade per issue. This is a weird cover or a weird uh, spread shot. I like that spreadsheet spread shot whatever. A maze within a maze within a maze within a maze. Some terrific art. Let's check real quick. Year. Are we up to 1990? This might be 1990. So it originally started publishing in 1985 uh, with the Femforce Dead. The books themselves were out before that, but uh, characters existed in different places before that. But for the most part, we start seeing the full on series in 1985. They change artists a lot, but um, they pretty much maintain. Cool. Look at this. That is a nice big crowd shot of a whole bunch of different AC characters. Um, new and old, past, present, future. That's pretty cool. Uh, if we look over to this other page, we get Catman and Kitten. Uh, multiple cave girls. Uh, Strongman, Tiger Girl. Tiger Girl, I love Tiger Girl stuff. So uh, these are really cool. Uh, like, that's really neat. Kind of a reunion looking thing going on here. Oh no, not that guy. That guy's terrible. So we got a bunch of extra book left after the story. Which probably means we're gonna get some usually they put like vintage reprints in the back um, these are just old heroes or heroes from old that's pretty cool Camilla there seemed to be an endless uh, parade of different jungle girls um, and they have a ton of crazy names like uh, Zula Shannon, Sheena, um, Ula, uh, just Nyoke, there's, there's a bunch. There's just a whole bunch. Um, but it kills me because each one of them has a different animal print that they wear to differentiate them because they all look so similar. But I really appreciate these stories. They're usually from Fiction House, old issues of Fight Comics that they reproduced into the back of these. Uh, to flesh out their books, and I really, really appreciate it. It's one of the things that really, really shines about uh, AC Comics for me, is it's one of the best places to get vintage 1940s reprints of different stuff. It just is fantastic. Jungle Girl back issues, Western back issues, Femforce back issues. Uh, just really cool stuff. So that's issue 29. Issue 30, uh, looks like we get Garganta back. Uh, Garganta is one of my favorite uh, friends slash villains. Um, she kind of bounces back and forth. She's kind of a tragic uh, character from the group or from the book. So 
Ugh, this guy. I hate this guy. And, wow. What is this dude's name? Horrible. How horrible. Their throat's ripped out. Uh-oh. Kitten beware. A giant with the face of the dead draws near. A big, nasty Nazi. That's amazing. Yeah, I wasn't really aware that uh, Catman and Kitten never crossed over into this universe, but uh, I, I vaguely remember them being an AC book at some point. They've bounced companies a lot. And currently, you can get a Catman figure made by, uh, oh, what is it? McFarland Toys. Okay, so this is Miss Victory, the Femme Force against Gargantia, the 50-foot woman who is not a giant terror by choice, generally. She kind of just grows whenever she happens to. But an interesting, tragic character. And this is some tremendous art. This is some fantastic stuff. They just have a way that they draw. never shy away from damage each, damaging each other's face. They're always gouging each other in the face with something or punching each other. Lots of face punching. Uh, looks like we got things going on here. Night Veil, a big, beautiful... I don't know who would ever pull this out. Like, that's crazy. But it's cool that it's in there. Like, I would never, ever probably remove that. Now, while... Uh, her eyes are clearing. Uh, I've got to put everything I got into one punch. Very nice. Very savage punching. Yes, of course. Paparazzi. Take a picture on the ground. Quick, she's moving. What? And she's becoming giant. You didn't take her out good enough. Now you have a giant, angry, 50-foot woman to deal with. And isn't that something that we find we have to deal with all the time in AC Comics? Giant angry women. It's just a thing. I don't know. It was a, it was a reoccurring theme in so many of their books. And I think some of these stories get reprinted in Gargantorama, which was a double-sided feature. Basically, uh, just reprinting all of their giant stories into... Uh, into like these flip sides on the back of the covers. It was awesome. I have a few from the past, which you are welcome to check out in my other videos. Uh, we got more tales from Camilla. Um, this looks amazing. They've done way different ink work um, than they normally do. Like the, the inking is done way, way darker and way more thorough. And it really, it really looks fantastic actually. Sometimes these tend to be a little bit blah, and they are these these are really re really well done. On a rampage, Gargantua, cycle of fire. We've got issue thirty-one, which is a great opening page. There's a a thing from of Nioka on the other page. Cave Girl covers, Black and White Adventures, the shading in this is done quite well also. Coming this fall from AC Comics, I always love their ads because sometimes it tells me about stuff I didn't know existed. Next issue is issue 32, which is right over there. Uh, definitely one of the racier covers they ever did. Uh, he is missing an arm. This looks like different art than normal, but this is also a dragonfly story. And dragonfly tends to look just slightly different than your average Fem Force book. A little bit more sleek, a little bit more spacey, stuff like that. And 
honestly, I don't think I like the art as much. It's just not as, I don't know, it's, it's not as vintage looking. It has, a, it has a more modern angle to it. A little bit sleeker, a little more 90s. Maybe not my favorite, favorite thing. Paragon. Ally of the Fem Force. I think, I think Miss Victory dates him at some point. I can't remember. It's been so long since I read these. They are what they are, though. I always thought this ad was weird. All right, so let's flip this back around so it's number one. Put those right there. 32, like I said, uh, definitely the craziest, raziest cover that they had. Uh, yeah, hopefully that won't get me demonetized. Um, prologue, we got, uh, once again, she is still on a rampage, and now I'm quite certain this is uh, reprinted in Gargantorama because some of this is looking very familiar as something I've looked through uh, more recently than I've read these. But I believe those were also in black and white. So it's not like the added color. That, that is a tremendous page. You've got Dragonfly, uh, you've got Stardust. She just got a, a full chunk of building thrown at her. And that is cool. That is really cool. Apparently, Dragonfly packs quite a punch. All sorts of badness going on. Looks like they're calling in the military. Hammer of Destruction. Uh, she's got a tank there. Clearly, uh, some creative editing. Um, and it's beautiful how she's using the tank as a shield. So. Looking at this again, I'm thinking, no, this was not, uh, this was not reprinted in Gargantuarama. At least not any of them that I have. Whoa, look at that. It's a lot of dialogue. There's way more dialogue than I am used to seeing in any of these. That is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of dialogue. I even had to make room for it all. That's when they called me in. They need Miss Victory, and I jumped at the call, but I never dreamed that I'd be caught between love and duty. So, cool opening page. I love the art in this book. I love the way that it carries. It just always looks cool to me. It almost looks like it could be parody. It could almost be, uh, you know, I don't know what the word is. It, I mean, it, it often looks very vintage, just the way that they draw people. But uh, it definitely has its own style. It's definitely its own house style for AC. And there's so many, so many modern artists that just could never draw for this book because they would never do it right. And that's just how it is. They're, they're, not, they're not cut out for it. Love what's going on here. This is the coolest uh, water helmet I think I've ever seen. Epilogue, that is an awesome fish. Mm, Fem Force buttons. Cool. I don't remember those. I don't know if I've ever seen them. Anyway, there it is. Uh, very, very cleverly, carefully edited. Um, but there it is, uh, issues 29 through 32. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna still, I'm looking forward to going through the entire series of these. They do get color again, and I believe that's coming up shortly, so you can look forward to that. Thank you for watching. That's my story. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.